This is Jeff Weiss with Unit 12. There's actually two uh, lectures for this. Um, first one is on uh, turf and pruning, and the second one is uh, going to be a little different. It is um, a lecture on sustainable landscaping, but uh, the requirements for me developing this course was to use open source materials and my sustainable landscaping lecture does not use those so I'm going to record it put it on YouTube for you to look at and um, uh, you're not going to be able to um, get the slides for that one unfortunately so anyway um, hopefully uh, that's not an inconvenience and um, since the um, uh, discussion question is about sustainability you're going to need to look at that and I hope um, I hope you like it anyway for this week um, overall um, we're going to be um, discussing strategies for soil water and energy conservation and protection uh, describing critical environmental services provided by plants and demonstrating proper pruning techniques for woody landscaping plants. So your uh, assignment is going to be to prune a shrub or a tree uh, around your home or uh, uh, a landscape where you have permission to uh, to do so and to take photos. So the first two of these um, objectives will be from the other um, lecture. So for um, uh, turf, uh, there's a couple of uh, key terms that we'll get to, and then for the pruning exercise, uh, uh, a couple more. And there are uh, video materials uh, uh, for pruning that should help you uh, get going with that and feel confident uh, that you're uh, doing the right thing. So turf is any variety of grass uh, that can be mowed to maintain an even lawn uh, for ornamental, functional, or recreational purposes. Uh, unfortunately, most of the turf used in the Midwest is uh, exotic, uh, that is plants, uh, cool season Eurasian grasses. Uh, they are uh, not the uh, native uh, grass plants of the prairie and those uh, plants are not uh, adapted for the kind of landscaping look that um, people are trying that most people are trying to achieve in their yards or that even uh, many municipal uh, ordinances require so um, if your community like mine requires uh, grass to be mowed to a height of um, I think the number is two inches or three inches uh, you're not going to achieve that with uh, by using uh, uh, big blue stem or Indian grass which commonly grow up to eight feet tall. Uh, an exception is if you live in uh, Prairie Crossing uh, where the uh, Homeowners Association not only allows but encourages uh, plantings uh, in yards and I think the uh, development's delightful but not it's not to be um, and it's not uh, preferred by um, many of our uh, neighbors. So um, given that, um, the um, types of grass that are uh, commonly used in lawns and in parks and other areas where turf grass is grown are uh, all uh, from out of our area. Uh, but tall, uh, tall fescue and Kentucky bluegrass um, are uh, some of the uh, cool season grasses, and they um, they thrive uh, where the temperatures uh, uh, are 60 to 75 degrees during the growing season. Uh, they go dormant uh, in the winter, and they also go dormant if it's too hot and dry in the summertime. Whereas our uh, warm season uh, grasses, uh, the native uh, grasses of the prairie include uh, big blue stem, Indian grass, uh, side oats, grama, switchgrass, little blue stem. Um, these plants uh, get from four to eight feet tall and they grow um, only when the soil temperature warms up uh, during the uh, summer. So these uh, plants grow rapidly during the warm months 
uh, set their seeds in August, September, and then uh, uh, go dormant until the following uh, late spring. So for these uh, exotic um, uh, uh, cool season grasses that we use in our yards, golf courses, parks, um, there are uh, a number of considerations uh, uh, to def um, um, install and maintain those uh, um, those turf areas. Uh, first of all, uh, selecting the grass based on its growth habit, uh, bunching or creeping, um, using grasses uh, that have uh, stolons or rhizomes uh, help to uh, fill in areas and make them uh, uh, give them the full uh, appearance um, that um, we come to expect from our turf. Uh, the texture matters. Uh, fine, uh, I guess the, the uh, example of a fine textured grass is Kentucky bluegrass. Uh, the aggressiveness of the um, grass is a factor. Um, in fact, uh, outside of uh, our lawns and uh, yards, uh, Kentucky bluegrass is a, an aggressive plant that uh, invades some of our natural areas. So even though we have problems getting it going in our yard sometimes or other grasses uh, grow into our perfect Kentucky bluegrass uh, uh, lawn, uh, it is uh, an aggressive uh, uh, plant that will uh, establish and uh, try to outcompete other grasses and weeds. Then a, a factor for our uh, a choice of grasses is resistance to wear and tolerating um, uh, pedestrian and other, other kinds of traffic. And f uh, another one is the level of maintenance needed, mainly uh, uh, mowing, fertilization, uh, and uh, use of uh, pesticides to control grubs and other, um, other, uh, other issues. And then there's the uh, additional considerations for more challenging sites where you want to establish uh, turf grass, and that is uh, uh, areas that are large or difficult to water. Uh, uh, Drought-prone uh, species of grasses uh, should be selected. Um, uh, certainly shade. Uh, uh, Kentucky bluegrass does just great out in the uh, full sun, but uh, is less uh, successful in shade, and there's other uh, fescues uh, and ryegrasses that do better in shade. Uh, extreme soil reaction is uh, pH, uh, high or low pHs uh, uh, in the soil uh, uh, effect which uh, grass will, uh, will grow there. Uh, salinity, uh, the level of, uh, of salt in the soil is another challenge. And then finally uh, heavy use uh, uh, heavy uh, pedestrian traffic or uh, even vehicular traffic uh, such as uh, golf carts or uh, lawn maintenance equipment um, will affect the use. And in fact, uh, the illustration here is of, uh, of, a, of a permeable uh, uh, driveway surface uh, uh, with bunch grass growing in the, uh, in the holes between the, um, between the concrete blocks. So um, one of the issues with uh, turf grass uh, is how to get it established. Um, a seed is uh, certainly the predominant use uh, uh, or, or method. Uh, it's uh, pretty cheap to buy a bag of uh, grass seed and sow it and water it and wait for it to come up. Uh, but sod is uh, much more expensive but faster and more reliable and is commonly used for uh, establishing new um, new uh, lawns in uh, uh, residential properties and uh, uh, some uh, high visibility locations. But um, there are significant downsides uh, for these uh, manicured um, lawns that we see. Um, and uh, use of uh, exotic turf grass is, uh, in my opinion, not a um, uh, not a uh, sustainable um, landscaping practice. 
So in the first place, these are uh, exotic uh, species which are taking up space that uh, would be better uh, utilized by uh, some of our uh, native species that are adapted to our climate, our rainfall, and uh, soils and other conditions. So um, these uh, exotic grasses require a lot of inputs of water, fertilizer, pesticide in order to, uh, to thrive in our uh, urban and suburban uh, conditions. Um, any plant that is a monoculture is by definition um, reducing biodiversity and um, a perfect bluegrass uh, lawn is, has exactly one plant species growing in it and uh, it, it is not supporting um, any kind of ecological value for uh, uh, wildlife or other um, other plants. Um, and then uh, probably the my biggest objection to uh, turf grass is because uh, they have shallow root systems and uh, uh, frequently are are filled with thatch. Uh, there is a lot of uh, runoff of rainwater um, from grass into our streams and uh, and uh, uh, stormwater systems, uh, which uh, exacerbates uh, erosion, uh, flooding, and uh, the um, uh, release of pollutants, uh, both pollutants that are um, uh, put into the so uh, into the grass, the fertilizers and pesticides. Uh, but also uh, uh, increased runoff uh, washes, road salts, chemicals, other uh, uh, other uh, materials from uh, the land and from the uh, uh, impervious surfaces, the sidewalks, roofs, roads, parking lots, etc., and um, uh, contributes to the uh, pollution that we see in uh, almost all of our urban and suburban streams. So a um, little more on this erosion protection. Uh, when turf is continuously mowed, mowed short, it reduces root development. So um, our native plants, as shown in this illustration, have very deep root systems that can be used to absorb, hold, and slowly release uh, um, rainwater deeper into the soil layers and into the atmosphere through evapotranspiration. Uh, not so for our turf grass. And in fact, uh, use of turf grass can lead to increased compaction where water does not infiltrate into the soil but just runs over the surface and out into uh, uh, storm systems in our streams. So given that <coughs> turf grass is problematic, some of those problems can be reduced by uh, higher mowing and aeration, uh, allowing the turf to better protect uh, the soil from erosion. Here's a slide about uh, turf maintenance, uh, pretty obvious, and you can uh, uh, look at this for um, some of the uh, maintenance operations that need to be conducted to maintain these uh, healthy looking uh, uh, turf grass areas. So enough about turf. You can tell that's not my favorite subject. Um, and we'll move to the art and science of manipulating plant growth and structure by cutting off parts of plants, i.e. pruning. So uh, one of the uh, important points about pruning is to uh, plan ahead. Look at your landscape. Consider um, not just what you want uh, things to look like immediately after uh, pruning, but instead uh, over the long term. Um, in this first instance, uh, by removing the uh, uh, the larger tree, um, creating uh, much more sunlight to penetrate through to the uh, to the smaller trees and uh, shrubs below, and uh, uh, by removing uh, uh, smaller shrubs, the larger one or this small tree uh, in the center of the illustration uh, uh, can be pruned and uh, achieve its optimal uh, shape and growth. So rules of thumb for pruning. Uh, first of all, uh, uh, try to prune at the opposite season as flowering. Um, so if it's a fall flowering uh, plant, 
try to prune it in the spring and vice versa. And then for any kind of pruning in spring, um, uh, as the sap starts to rise, uh, pruning the tree can result in uh, hemorrhaging sap and uh, uh, some uh, damage to the uh, health and vigor of the plant. Uh, another rule of thumb is to uh, prune 20 percent of branches each year. Um, that's primarily for shrubs, although uh, trees will also tolerate a lot of pruning. Uh, and to, uh, uh, to do that not only maintains the shape, but also uh, stimulates uh, growth and vigor of the plant. Here's some uh, tools for pruning. Uh, the best ones are loppers in the middle illustration, uh, hand saws for cutting larger branches, and uh, pruner for uh, uh, small, uh, small branches. Um, hedge trimmers, chainsaws for very large branches uh, are good. Uh, hedge shears are not recommended except for very fine growth uh, or maintaining uh, uh, formal hedges and topiaries. So uh, here's a couple of points about uh, uh, pruning hedges. Uh, if your hedge is uh, uh, wide and flat on top, snow accumulates, uh, which can cause uh, damage to the to the shrub. Uh, straight lines require more frequent trimming than rounded shapes. Uh, and here, the rounded top is uh, uh, going to hinder snow accumulation. And um, in general, uh, rounded forms uh, require less trimming and are uh, more natural looking. Uh, there's more material um, in the audiovisual for the week, but uh, the uh, proper method of cutting a of, of doing a pruning cut is to uh, first uh, make a cut uh, below the branch uh, to prevent bark from being stripped off when the branch falls off. Uh, make your second cut to release the weight on the branch and then a final cut following the branch collar. And uh, these smooth cuts uh, allow the tree or shrub to heal the cut naturally. Um, most, despite uh, the sale of uh, materials to uh, seal uh, um, uh, pruning cuts, uh, they're not necessary and not even recommended. Uh, the, um, if the pruning cut is made properly, uh, the, the uh, uh, wound should heal itself without any other material being added. Some common problems from pruning. Uh, well, uh, bad shape, uh, uh, sucker growth, or uh, sometimes they're called water sprouts. Those numerous little tiny uh, twigs that poke upward uh, through the shrub or tree. Um, some branches, uh, if not pruned carefully, can be spaced too close. And importantly, and this is really uh, critical to the health of the plant, is um, these uh, crotches uh, illustrated by point number six that are just to uh, the angle um, between the trunk and the uh, and the, and the branch is too small. And uh, actually, uh, crotch, uh, which has uh, a bigger angle, is more secure and stronger and likely to withstand uh, high winds and storms and snow um, uh, loads of snow on them. So cut selectively. Don't hack back or shear. And um, you should do fine on your um, assignment for this week and next, which is to prune a tree or shrub. So that's it for this part of the lecture. I am going to continue on and record a lecture using a PowerPoint that is not on your assignment and uh, I hope that or not in the enter system and I hope that you enjoy it.